Faith works by love. And we should never forget that. To, to begin with, we start with Galatians chapter 5, verse 6. For in Christ, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything, but faith working through love. This, this law, this whole issue of law, whether you're circumcised, you're uncircumcised, the whole issue of the law, it, that's not the thing to focus on. It doesn't matter. But what's really important is that faith works, faith working through love. There are different words for love. For example, the storge, which means family love, the love between our family members, Philia, which means friendship love. Eros, which means sexual love. But the word love that's being used here in Galatians 5 verse 6, very specifically, is the Greek word agape. So what Paul is saying is faith works through agape. We have to be motivated. We've got to be moved with this agape, God kind of love, if we want to see faith produce in our lives. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, have not agape, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. That means, you know, I could, I could speak with tongues, I could have the expressions of the gifts of the Spirit, very good, and we encourage that, we must have that. But he is saying, if I'm only doing that, but I'm not being fueled by agape love, then I'm just blowing hot air, I'm making a lot of noise. And though I have the gifts of, gift of prophecy, and I understand all mysteries, all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. He says, look, I could do all these things. I could have all these expressions of God through my life. But if I'm not compelled, propelled, and moving in love, in the God kind of love, he says, I am nothing. That, that word for nothing in the Greek is very interesting. Uh, it simply means not even one. Now abides faith, hope, love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. That means put love first. He's not saying get rid of faith and get rid of hope. We need those things. We need hope. We need faith in our lives. Uh, but the foremost, the one that you give most importance to, the greatest, the best of these is love. Love suffers long and is kind Love does not envy, love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. Let me paraphrase this uh, this way. Love, God's love in us, is patient and kind. So am I dealing with patience and kindness in the way I'm working with people, in my situations? Romans 5, verse 5, it says, hope does not make us ashamed. Let's read the verse together. Because the love of God has been shed abroad or poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. The love of God has been poured into my heart by the Holy Spirit who's been given to me. See, this is good news. Because we don't have to try and manufacture this love. Now, the purpose of the commandment is love from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from sincere faith. So, notice what Paul is saying. He's saying the whole purpose of the commandment, you know, all the commands of God, the whole purpose, the whole objective, the whole aim of all of that is this. God wants us to have love from a pure heart, a good conscience, and sincere faith. 